ओके वी आर स्टडी डेटा कम्युनिकेशन एंड कंप्यूटर नेटवर्क कोर्स ओके सो इन द लास्ट क्लास इफ यू डू रिमेम्बर सो वी आर डिस्कसिंग चैप्टर नंबर वन फ्रॉम कंप्यूटर नेटवर्किंग अ टॉप डाउन अप्रोच सेवेंथ एडिशन सो इन द लास्ट क्लास वी हैड डिस्कस नेटवर्क कोर आई स्पीस हाउ दे आर कनेक्टेड वॉट इज दियर स्ट्रक्चर एंड एन टू एन डिले वॉट आर द डिले कंपोनेंट्स एंड हाउ दे आर एंड हाउ दे कैन बी कंप्यूटेड ओके सो इन टू डेज क्लास वी विल ऑल्सो कंटिन्यू चैप्टर नंबर वन from computer networking a top down approach 7th edition in this class we are going to study protocol layers and their service models and we we will also discuss networks uh, security and uh, there are uh, some history uh but i will just give you an overview and for uh, it's not mandatory okay so <coughs> let's discuss first of all why do we need layering this is very good okay so usually uh whenever we have a complex system okay so what we do if we have a complex system we divide that complex system into sub parts by using divide and conquer approach and each part is solved individually and then the solution of each part is combined okay so so is in the real life when we have a complex system we divide the complex system into sub parts and each part is then solved individually okay and then the solution of each sub part is combined and that gives us the working of com complete system so let me give you some analogy that how a complex system is divided so for example if you want to take admission in a uh, university okay so how it is done first of all you have to visit the admission department okay for what the admission department they are uh they have the responsibility for collecting the forms okay for arranging the test for displaying the merit list once the merit list is displayed then the concerned department for example computer science department they takes the interviews okay and then after this the account departments they collect the fee and the registration department they register the students after they have paid the account the fee so you can see that the admission dep the concerned department they only takes the interview they are not concerned that how the admission what are the uh, how the admission uh, what are the requirements whether they have passed this how the how the test is going etc all these things they are done by admission department the admission department only send a list to the department who are shortlisted and the department of cs they only takes the interview okay so similarly the account department they collect the fee after getting the confirmation from the cs department okay so if the student is passed in the interview then the account department takes the collect the fee from those students okay so the account department they are not concerned what are the criteria of the admission how how the admission are test are uh, passed or fail or whatsoever how the interview was conducted how the inter interview should be conducted what should be asked so all these things they are the 
fall under the jurisdiction the, uh, of the CS department. Okay. Similarly, after paying the collecting the fee, the registration department they registered the student in the university. So similarly, the university system of the admission it is divided into four parts. And each department they do their own work. Okay. So similarly, for example, when you write a computer program, so you divide that program into functions, into modules. Okay. For example, you have a calculator function. So you divide that calculator function into functions uh, in uh, 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 calculator program into functions like some function like the it it's it some two or more than two numbers so how they are done how they it's up to function you just call them if you need to the some function okay similarly there will be a multiplication function a multiplication function it will it will uh, return the product of two or more than two numbers and how they are multiplied it is up to the function implementation if you need to multiply two numbers you just call their function okay so what is its advantage the advantage is modularity what is the modularity? for example if you change the working of multiplication function so it you only have to change you ha only have to do changes in the multiplication function and the rest of program it is not affected it is not affected so similarly uh, another example suppose we want to send uh, uh, for example Nadir uh, from CUI UI campus uh, he wants to send a letter an official letter to another faculty member Asad who is at the Islamic University Islamabad IIUI Islamabad so how it is done first of all Nadir will send its dog its letter to registrar at CUI work campus. Registrar at CUI work campus, they give the letter to TCS office. The TCS office, they deliver your letter physically from the CUI registrar to the registrar at IIUI. And then the registrar at the UI, it delivered the letter to us. Okay, so you can see that here, this is the, you now if you, uh, so you can see that the letter is delivered from Nadir to Asad. By whom? By registrar to registrar. And from registrar to registrar, the physically it is de delivered by TCS. Okay, so, so you can see that the admission procedure, it is divided into sub parts. The a program is divided into sub parts and each part is solved individually. Similarly, a letter uh, delivery, uh, it is also divided into sub parts. So similarly, organization of air travel. Let's see it in the next slide. So you can see that uh, in air travel, it is divided into sub parts. For example, you have to, there is a ticket purchase department. There is a baggage check department. There is a gate load department. The runway takeoff department, and then the airplane is routing. So it moves the passenger, okay, to another airport, and then after that, the runway landing, it the uh, the, uh, the 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 airplane landed, and then it is unloaded, and then the baggages are collected, and then the ticket complaint, etc. Okay. So all these so similarly so it is divided. Why it is divided? So that it if for example if the baggage collection procedure is changed, so it will not affect the purchase gate runway or other systems. Okay, the ticket purchase system it only deal with the ticket purchase and ticket complaint system and the rest it now it is passed to the baggage that who are allowed to um, to. Uh, to uh, take the uh, um, seat in the uh, airplane okay so similarly you can see that this is the procedure of uh, air travel so it is divided into layers 
so what do we mean up to now what do we mean by mean that whenever we have a complex system we divide the complex system into sub parts into sub system into functions and each sub system is solved individually okay so it basically it make it easy so why learning when we deal with a complex system okay so we divide the complexes into sub parts it explicitly explicit structure allows identification relation of complex system pieces okay the layers so you can see that for each layer we have defined the function that what it will do what it will do what it will do and the uh, and baggage information system it will only gets the detail of the passenger who have taken the ticket and how they are taken what is uh, its cost etc they are not concerned okay so there is a relationship of uh, between the layers okay so the layering it provides modulation and modularization it eases maintenance updating of system for example if uh, if the admission criteria is changed so the concern department account department registration department they will not be affected why because the it is the only concern of the admission department okay similarly if you make the changes in a multiplication function so you don't need to do to modify other functions because it is the uh, only concern about the multiplication function okay similarly if the tcs department they the tcs they change their procedure to deliver the letter from uh, islam from pindi to islamabad uh, for example the tcs was using motorbike and now they are using the car they are using the cycle okay so it is their own choice how they do it okay so similarly the layering it provides modularization it is maintenance and updating the system so changing in the implementation of a, of a layer in a subsystem it doesn't affect the rest of the system okay for example change in the gate procedure doesn't affect the rest of the system in the airplane for example here if there is a change in the gate system so it doesn't need to change other things okay so they are not concerned with them okay so so what is the advantage of layering the advantage of layering is that men ease of maintenance modularization doing change in one part in one subsystem will not affect the other subsystems but the layering is sometimes harmful what are the disadvantages of layering so the disadvantage of layering is that there may be duplication of services maybe one for example uh, a function is also done in the gates and also uh, also done in the gateway okay so this may happen so and second is for example uh, in the net this is example uh, we will see net is a protocol network address translation table so it is a protocol we will study it that one layer may may does another layer functionality so net it is the routing layer uh, protocol and it access the uh, it modif it do uh, it does change the uh, protocol the transport layer it etc so okay so we will discuss it okay but overall the advantages of layer is more they are more it has more advantages but so therefore the layering is used in the internet okay and how it is used let's discuss it basically the network the networks are complex system why complex as we have dis discussed that when we have a complex system so we divide it into layers into subsystems okay so similarly the network the internet it is a complex system why it has many pieces for example it has host 
it has routers it has links and links of various media like wired media wireless copper wire co axial cable fiber optic and wireless we have wi-fi 3g short range 4g uh, satellite etc and we have different applications for example skype gmail web server etc okay similarly we have different protocols for different applications and hardware and software involved so that's why the so it means the internet is also a complex system okay so the communication between two internet application it is also a complex system so it so therefore we also divide it into layers we divide it into layers and how many layers so let's discuss it so basically the internet communication the internet communication between two application it is a complex process so if it is a complex process so it should be divided into layers it should be divided into layers and it should be divided into how many layers so for this purpose uh, there were two models that have been suggested in the literature there are two models that are suggested in the literature the first model was proposed like this way it was called iso or osi reference model open system interconnection reference model and this model the communication between two internet application for example skype application gmail application so it is divided into seven layers into seven subtask for example one was called application layer the top then presentation layer then session layer then transport layer then network layer then link layer then physical layer so according to this model it was proposed first it was proposed first and according to this model they divided the internet protocols the internet communication the communication between two internet application into seven models we will discuss the functionality of each layer or uh, each of these layer so the first model that was proposed for the internet it was iso or osi reference model and according to this model the communication between two internet application is divided into seven layers later on another model was proposed this model was called internet protocol stack also and it is also called tcp ip model according to this tcp ip model it is suggested after osi model it it has come uh, later on okay so according to this model the communication between two internet application it is divided into five layers into five layers and these five layers are application layer transport layer network layer link layer and physical layer so according to osi it is divided into seven layers and according to the tcp ip model it is divided into five layers okay but the overall communication between two internet internet application whether it is using tcp ip or osi it is same okay so as i have mentioned that this was osi model was suggested f first and later on the tcp ip model was suggested when this model was suggested so it was only in a paperwork it was not implemented when this model was suggested later on so it was implemented and it was implemented the people used it the people used it so that's why this model was not applied in practice and this model was used in practice so the people used this model so nowadays it is used in practice and this model is now no use okay it is just a paperwork so now nowadays the internet is using this model why it is used because it was implemented first though osi model has come first but it was not implemented first it was it came later 
but it was implemented first when it was implemented the people used it and now the people are using it so nowadays the internet is using this model okay the tcp ip model so according to tcp ip model the communication between two internet application it is divided into five layers application layer transport layer network layer link layer and physical layer okay so now we are going so uh, up to now we have discussed that what is the what we do with our complex system we divide into sub parts so the internet communication it is divided into sub tasks and this is called internet protocol stack now let's discuss the working of the functionality of each layer the functionality of each layer the application layer it support network application what does it mean the application layer it translates the data from user format to the system format for example on the sense side for example i'm using internet and i'm talking so my voice will be changed into system format into bits and on the sending side and then it will be sent to the receiver on the receiving side it is received bits so it will be displayed as a wise voice okay so this is the functionality of application layer similar when i sends video so the video is changed into bits and then it is when it is received so it will be displayed as a video mp4 mp5 etc and so on so this is the functionality of so user to system interaction this is the application layer responsibility okay what is transport layer transport layer delivers the data from application to application from process to process so it is like the delivering the data from registrar to registrar in in our example if you do remember so i give you an an analogy for example nadir it is a user application okay and it is sending that the letter to asad at islamic university so they, so asad and nadir they are application they are users and when they send data they cannot send directly data they have sent their data to through the registrar so actually the letter is going from the registrar at cui to registrar at iu but the registrar they don't physically deliver the data the letter they do deliver the the letter through tcs and the tcs they physically take the letter from registrar at cui to the registrar at i i u i okay so registrar to registrar communication it is the transport layer functionality all the letters that come are going through uh cui campus it is done through registrar okay similarly all the letters that are delivered to iiu they go they are they are received by registrar and then the registrar delivered that letter to the concerned user so this is the functionality of transport layer this is functionality of transport layer let me explain it for example if you see it this is a system and it runs two application p1 and p2 this is a system it runs an application p3 this is an application it runs before on this system this application is talking to this application and this application is talking to this application that is p3 and p1 are communicating p4 and p2 are communicating so when p3 sends the data so the transport layer takes the data from application okay and then it give it to network layer the network layer it delivers the data from source machine to the destination machine physically so it first has to find the path that which path is best for example this is the network layer is the tcs office the tcs it is the network layer so it gets the physical data and it move physically the data to the destination when it comes to the destination okay so the network layer it only sends the data from the source machine to the destination machine physically the tcs office 
it takes the, the letter from CUI registrar and it delivers physically that letter to IIUI registrar. Okay. Now there are different people, there are different applications. For example, P1 and P2. So the network layer it gives the data to transport layer to trans register. Okay, and now it is the responsibility of transport layer that this data is for which application. Since this data is for from P3 and it is for P1 application, so it delivered that data to P1 application, not to P2. So the transport layer in a system, it is responsible to deliver the data to correct application, to correct application. So this is called demultiplexing. Similarly, when this all these application for them P1, P2, they send the data. So they give the data to transport layer. Okay, so the transport layer then pass this data to the network layer. And for example, the P1 is sending data to P3. So the transport layer will get the data from P1 and the transport layer pass this data to the network layer. And now the network layer takes the data physically from this system and deliver the data to the to whom? to this system and now this system receives the data at network layer at the registrar office and now the network layer pass this, passes on this data to transport layer now it is the functionality of transport layer to give, deliver this data to correct application okay and how the application are identified the application on a system they are identified by port number and how the system in the internet they are identified they are identified through ip address so this system for example when sends the data so there are two systems this one and this is so through ip address it knows that the data should be delivered to this system not to this system so it so this is the responsibility of network layer to find the shortest path okay so I think the the working the functionality of transport layer and network layer is clear. Okay. So this is the working of. So the transport layer it does multiplexing when it receives the data from all applications. So it passes all the application data to the from transport layer to network layer. Okay. And the network layer has to deliver the physical data from source machine to distribution machine. Okay. Similarly, it also does demultiplexing. When it receives the data from from P4 or from P3, when it receives the data from P3, so the network layer it it is only responsible to move the data from source machine to destination machine. When the receiving machine it receives the data, so there are many applications. So the network layer functionality is finished. The network layer will pass on this data to transport layer. Now it is up to transport layer to decide that the data is for which application so this is the responsibility of transport layer to deliver the data to correct application okay okay so this is the functionality okay so it does demultiplexing why because demultiplexing is done because here all the application data as arriving at the transport layer and now the transport layer has decided that the data is for which application to only that application the data is delivered not to all other applications so it is does multiplexing for the sending data and demultiplexing for the receiving data okay and how the applications are identified the application are identified by port number we will discuss it later on okay and actually what is socket socket is basically a uh, api that is used to pass on the data from network from application to the network okay to the internet we will discuss it later on okay so let me explain uh, the working of uh, application layer transport layer and network layer again so the application layer it receives the data from the user and change it to the system format on the receiving side it receives the data in the system format change it into user format and give the data to the user in the user format if it is a video then it is displayed as a video if it is a pdf file then it is displayed as a pdf file 
okay so when the application when the user sends the data so the application layer receives the data from the user format and it changes to the system format and now the application layer pass on this data to the transport layer now the transport layer it has to identify first it ate the header what is the header that this data is from which application and this data is going to which application so all this information they are added here okay for example you can see it here the data transport layer received the data from p1 and the data is moving to p3 so the transport layer has to identify to to add the information that this data is from p1 and the data will be going to p3 okay so that information is basically the responsibility of transport layer okay so that information is added to the message to the data in the form of header in the form of header and now the transport layer the registrar it will pass on this data to network layer to whom to network layer so the network layer is tcs office okay so the tcs office it will deliver the data okay it will add its own header what is the header that what is the source machine address what is the destination machine address so this source machine address and destination machine address it will be added here okay and now the network layer when it sends the data so it first has to compute the best path the tcs office when it delivers the data so first they compute that from what to islam bath which is the best path it is first computed for example this is the best path so along this path the system has first sent data from here to first router to first router okay so now now comes the responsibility of link layer what does it do the link layer it delivers the data from first from source to first router okay so it is delivered first here okay on this link so this there may be one link or there may be two link okay so this is the responsibility of link layer and maybe there are this link is using for them for wireless link or wired lane and this link may be fiber optic okay so this is example is like for example we are sending letter from cui wa campus to iiu islamabad so this the 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 tcs office the network layer they gets your letter from cui wa campus now it is now they decide that from wa campus to rawalpindi they deliver the talk the letter and they deliver the letter through motorbike suppose and from rawalpindi to islamabad they deliver the letter to iui by using the car so it is up to them so this is the functionality of link layer to deliver the letter to to deliver the data from one system to another from from another system to another okay so the link layer it also add the information that this data is for this router okay and one thing that it should be noted okay so we will continue it in the next video okay